Good afternoon. Welcome to another Daily Devotion. This is episode 188, where we open up God's Word for 15 minutes so we can see what He has to say to us for another day. Today we're going to be turning to Matthew chapter 10. Over the last few days, we've been looking at Jesus sending out His disciples. And so we're going to be turning to Matthew chapter 10, verse 40 today. Verse 40. This is God's Word. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple Truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We ask that you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to believe all that you are saying to us. Lord, we long to be faithful and to follow you well, so help us to do so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, one of the one of the teachings that has become unfavorable might be the right word in the last century has been heavenly rewards. If you go back before the 20th century, everywhere from there backwards, you could go back to the Puritans, you go back to the Reformers, you go back all the way through church history, through to Augustine, all the way through to the early church, and and all the way through to the Bible, what you find is a constant thread of teaching on the reality and presence of eternal rewards. And and we're we're not thinking about you entering heaven. We're not talking about the eternal reward that is life in Christ. We're thinking about rewards for faithfulness. And throughout the church's history, there has been an understanding that how you live your life here and now will impact in some way your experience of eternity to come. And I will repeat, when we're not thinking, we're not thinking about whether people get into heaven or not. We're not thinking about salvation. We're talking about rewards for the people of God in their faithfulness. But interestingly, in the last 100 to 150 years, there has been a huge decline. A massive decline in the amount spoken, taught, and written about the place of eternal rewards in the Christian's understanding. It would be very fascinating to to know what's caused that. I have a slight inkling that it's come for an an improper overemphasis of the reality of salvation by grace alone. And so it's almost like there's there's a fear that if you talk about eternal rewards, then you're in danger of falling into a works-based salvation. And so it's almost like a reaction to legalism, a reaction to works, has been to create, or I should say, to, to deny, or maybe not deny, but to reduce the teaching on the place of rewards in the Christian life. Now, the danger of that is that we're killing a very biblical motivation to faithfulness. A very important biblical motivation to living a faithful life is the fact that there will be rewards for us in the kingdom of heaven. There will be rewards for us in the new heaven and the new earth if we are faithful. There will be some type of a correlation 
between how we live now and what we receive then. Now, we don't know. The Bible doesn't reveal the intricate working of God and how that works outside of one reality, that it is all of grace. No matter what reward we receive, all of it is because of God's free grace. Nothing we will we receive will be earned purely of our efforts. And, and this is illustrated by the parable Jesus tells of the men who earn 10 talents. You remember there's that parable Jesus tells of the servants. One gets given 10, one gets given 5, one gets given 1 talent. And the man who earns 10 talents gets given 10 cities. Now, that man didn't earn 10 cities. He earned 10 talents. Yet there is a correlation between what he did and what he receives. Yet, what he receives so far out exceeds what he did. Because it's all of grace. And in our passage today, we, we see the reality of heavenly rewards in the teaching of Jesus. In fact, it's something he uses probably more than any other person in the New Testament. I'm fairly confident in saying that Jesus has the most teaching on rewards in the new heavens and the new earth. And that's exceedingly important because he's the one that will be doing the judgment at the final judgment day. He's the one who will be deciding these things. And so it makes sense that it's so prevalent in his teaching. I can remember being a small boy and going, to, I, I went to a private Christian school and we used to have sports days, inter-school sports events with other schools and, the, and they were non-Christian schools, public schools. And I can still remember our, our sports uniform had a, a school emblem on it with a big cross, a big cross on the emblem. And I can still vividly hear the voices of the children from the other schools harassing us for this cross, making fun of us for being Christians. And I remember being quite perturbed by this, and I went and spoke to one of the young teachers at our school, and, and he said to me, Logan, remember that the Bible says, Blessed are you when people revile you. Matthew 5. And he said, just picture every single time someone harasses you, there is a, a, there is a reward for you in Christ. And the next time I went to a sports event, as they began harassing me, what came to mind was this reality that there is a reward that is bound up in being faithful and suffering faithfully. And it enabled me to endure the scoffing and the shame that these people were heaping upon me. Now, if we remove the reward system, if we remove the biblical teaching of reward, we remove that whole motivation to faithfulness. And that's a massive loss for us as Christians. We want to walk faithfully, don't we? That's what, that's what this devotion is all about. That's what da these daily devotions, all 188 of them are about. They're about following Christ faithfully. I want to follow Christ faithfully. So even if none of you watch this, I'll probably carry on making them because it's enabling me to follow Christ. And, and that's what I want for you. I want you to be able to follow Christ. And so here in our, in our passage today, Jesus says, anyone who receives, anyone who, whoever receives you receives me. Whoever receives me receives him who sent me. So how you treat the servant of God is how you treat God. Now, it's very interesting because this passage has often been used and twisted for a social gospel type teaching. You, you need to care for homeless people because if you give someone a cup of water, Jesus will consider it done against him. Now, that's a complete abuse of this passage and the context of it. This passage, we remember, is set in the context of disciples going out to preach the word, ministers of the gospel going out. And Jesus says, if you treat my minister well, you treat me well. The chief focus here, the first focus here, is the servant of God. 
And so Jesus says, as my disciples come into your town to preach the word, as they come to serve you, how you treat them, I will consider how you treat me. If you just give them a cup of water, you will have a reward for that. And that's a challenge for, for many of us. And, and I don't say this as a way to try and take a stab against the people in my church. But this is a challenge for all of us. How do we treat the representatives of God that he has given us? How do we treat the under shepherds, the elders? How do we treat the missionaries? How do we treat the ministers of the gospel? How do we treat our preachers? Do we provide for them? Do we care for them? Do we pray for them? Do we receive them? Do we welcome them for meals? Do we love them? Do we shower them with gifts? And, and I'm not talking about a prosperity gospel showering with Mercedes Benz. I'm talking about just expressing love and concern for them. I tell you, as someone who is in the day-to-day -day active call of ministry, ministry is hard. And I know it's hard for you if you're not in the ministry. I know it's hard for you to understand this, but it is exhausting. And, and whatever church you're in, your minister is, is exhausted. He is burdened. He is tired. And he is passionately consumed with his calling and he loves it he should be he should love it and he should not want to change it for anything in the world and what he so sorely needs is your love is your care is your concern is your prayers is your support is just you to treat him as you would treat jesus because he stands there on behalf of christ to serve you and love you. And the wonderful thing for you is that Jesus says, if you do this, you will receive a reward. Do you want a reward? When you stand before Christ, do you want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. This is, this is the reward I give you for your faithfulness. This is what I want you to have. Or do you want to get there and have Jesus say, well, I've saved you by grace, but really there's no reward to give you because you have not lived faithfully. Now, you may struggle with that teaching. That might be completely new for you. If that's new for you, I challenge you, read the New Testament, read the read the Gospels, and, and just keep in your mind constantly, where do I see this teaching of motivation of rewards? And I guarantee you, you will discover that I am right on this. Because it's written all through the New Testament. And if you want to know more about this, just send me an email. My email address, the church's email address, is at the end of the devotion. Or you can email me personally at logan at hargort.co.nz. The biggest thing is, live for Christ. See, that's what it's all about. Live for Christ. Not, not because you have to earn his favor, but out of a desire to know him and dwell with him and love him. I think it's something we sorely need to get a better grasp on in the church, is what it means to live for eternity. It's a challenge. But it's a glorious motivator. It spurs me on almost every day of my life. May it spur you on to faithfulness, to walk humbly with your God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful teaching. and We pray that this word, this teaching in this word, would soar into our hearts and cause us to live as becomes followers of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks so much for tuning in with me for another daily devotion and another week. I will see you back here again next Tuesday. I hope you have a most blessed Lord's Day and I look forward to seeing you next week. It will be my final week before I go away on four weeks holiday. And so we're going to have to have a break. That's okay. I'll see you next week, Tuesday, same place, same time.